Hello there, my fellow wine lovers. It's three o'clock on Friday, and it is Stephanie Miskew, AKA the Glamorous Gourmet, coming to you live from sunny and extremely hot South Florida, Delray Beach to be exact. Boy, it is, I'm telling you, we are in the 4th of July spirit because it is super hot, super hot down here. Um, so I wanted to thank you first and foremost for joining me today. As I mentioned before in the, some of the posts I've done, ooh, I got my first viewer. Um, it's my first Facebook Live, so I'm very excited and a little nervous about it, but I promise you we're gonna have some fun today. Um, as I mentioned before, today I'm gonna be talking about uh, picking fabulous wines for the 4th of July and beyond. Um, because these wines are gonna be perfect for 4th of July, but you can really enjoy these wines all summer long if you want. So I thought that might be more helpful than just picking wines that you can enjoy, um, you know, for the one holiday. But anyway, hold on, let me just, if you're here and you can hear me, can you leave a comment and let me know? Oh, cool. Okay, I, I'm just seeing what's popping up on my screen here. I'm a newbie, so bear with me. Um, so for those of you who are just meeting me for the first time, I've had my website, The Glamorous Gourmet, for about 10 years now, where I write about uh, food, wine, and travel. I also write about food and wine for Fox News as well, and I do a lot of events around town and stuff like that. But since I do spend a lot of my time writing, and you're kind of operating in a vacuum, uh, I love the opportunity to really do something interactive because let's face it when you're talking about food and wine I mean those things are so much more enjoyable when you're talking about them with friends, right? It really makes it it enhances the experience. I think so that's why I'm kind of Dipping my toe into the whole Facebook live thing and I'm also working on a new series of videos uh, That I'll be posting on my YouTube channel, but more about that later uh, so that's really why I'm excited today about um, about doing this so I hope you are too we're gonna have some fun I hope you can drink with me today if possible if since it is the holiday weekend if you're at work I'm sure your boss will understand if you just make yourself a drink or pour yourself a glass of wine just offer this them some too I'm sure they'll be fine with it so uh, a little bit about the format today since it's the first one I'm gonna try to keep it to about 20 maybe 30 minutes I mean we'll see how it goes depending on any questions you might have you know it's we'll just see but 20 minutes 30 minutes is kind of my my goal and basically I'm gonna talk about four different wines today and I'm gonna introduce each one and taste through it and then I'd be happy to answer your questions about any of the wines as well so um, anyway that's just how we're gonna proceed so when I think about, when I thought about picking wines for this episode, I always, whether it's 4th of July or any other event, I like to um, always pair the wine with the situation first. So for instance, when I think about 4th of July, I think about you're usually, you know, in a party setting with a big group of people. So you don't want, um, you don't want very expensive wines. You don't have to worry about Uncle Bobby dumping half your Napa cab in his solo cup and having to worry about that. The wine will be flowing. So I like to really pick wines that are reasonably priced, which is a good thing. Also, since the 4th of July and some of these major holidays, let's face it, they're more they're more of a marathon than a sprint, so to speak. So, you know, you need to kind of pace yourself. You're usually drinking your adult bet. Oh, I got a little heart. I'm so excited. That's great. Oh, hold on. Tap the viewer. Hold on one sec. I'm just gonna see this. Oh, great. Hey, Mo. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. I'm just getting acquainted with this, so bear with me. Anyway, so, okay, so the wines are gonna be not so expensive. Also, since you're, uh, since you're drinking from an earlier time in the day, you're usually at the beach with your adult beverage a little earlier than normal. And let's face it, you wanna, you wanna be up when the fireworks go off. So if you really wanna start drinking that early and last, you wanna pick wines that are slightly lower in alcohol than normal. I mean, we're not talking non-alcoholic here, but we are talking just a little tamer so you can you know 
you can last a little longer and still enjoy your day. So, well, that's definitely a factor that went into picking the wines for today. And also, I don't know about you, but I hate to be outside and it is so hot here. Have I mentioned that? Um, but I like wines that you can serve chilled. So you want something chilling and refreshing that you drink, not something, not a big, you know, 16% alcohol, Zinf California Zinfandel that's going to just make make you kind of sweat and make you hot more so and i love zinfandel i'm just saying maybe fourth of july isn't the best situation to drink it so in any event let me just check if you guys are there can you leave a comment and let me know before we dive into the wines let me see if i can I'm not sure i can view you here but hold on see list viewers hmm in any event all right so I'm just going to proceed then like I said it's a learning experience so bear with me so first and foremost we're going to be trying wines from all over the globe today so first we're going to start in Spain with a delightful cava and the wine that I've picked is the Poema cava and there's a picture of the bottle you know, I have to say, it's not the most beautiful bottle, but I mean, I do like the gold, of course, but um, but a, a little while ago, we opened up a bunch of different cavas because there's so many out there, and how do you know which one to pick? And we blind tasted them, and this one was my favorite. So, and get this, it's only $12 a bottle. I mean, that that's hard to beat, if you ask me. That's pretty amazing. So again, it's the Poema Cava, uh, and Cava is essentially Spain's version of Champagne. And in fact, Cava, in order for wine to be called Cava, it has to be made in the same method. So it's made in the method traditionnel, where the second fermentation happens, secondary fermentation happens in the bottle. So in any event, it's a dry style Cava. I like a drier style bubbly, and whenever you see Brut on the label, so not brute on the label. I don't see. Oh yeah, brute. See how it says brute there? Might be backwards for you, but anyway, brute means dry. So that means not sweet. It's going to be crisp and refreshing, and it's not going to be you know anything too sweet or anything like that. So always look for brute. Uh, this wine is made in um, from the indigenous grape varieties, uh, Macabeo. It's 40% Macabeo, 40% Zarello, and 20% Pariata. Those are the most common grapes used to make cava. And I'm telling you, it's just, uh, it's a beautiful wine. I'm gonna try a little bit of it now for you. And I mean, even on the nose, and oh, and thanks to my friend Rob Barnett, who reminded me that tomorrow kicks off Sparkling Wine Week. So what better way to kick off our tasting today? Um, I don't know if any of you out there are like me, but I just love sparkling wine, whether it's a Tuesday kicking back on the couch or what have you. So anyway, I love a bubbly. So gosh, on the nose, this has beautiful aromas of minerals and citrus. And you can just, you can smell almost how bright and the beautiful acid in the wine. And then Gosh, when you try, oh my God, it just lights up your palate with the beautiful acidity and the citrus, and it's got beautiful notes of Granny Smith apple. It's just fresh and clean and lovely. And at this price, I mean, you could easily drink it on its own, but if you were someone that liked to, um, that liked to make sparkling wine-based drinks, like Bellinis or Mimosas, this wine would be an excellent choice. So you don't want to spend, waste your good champagne on those drinks because you really want to enjoy the aromas and flavors of a nice champagne. So again, it's just light and bright and beautiful to pair well with a lot of different hors d'oeuvres and or anything you might really eat. It's so food friendly. Or as my husband likes to say, it's a great breakfast wine, right? So nothing wrong with the breakfast wine, right? So, okay, so that is our first wine of the day. And if you have any questions about any of the wines as we're tasting, go ahead and post them. I'll do my best to answer them. And I appreciate them as well. So if I can see them. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. We did a little bit of a practice. Let me see. In any event. Okay. All right. This is, this is good. Okay, now I get it. Now I'm seeing your comments. Okay, great. Thank you, Laura. 
Laura, if you're still with us, where are you? Can you tell me where you're, where you're joining us from? Anyway, let me know. And if you're watching, you know, chime in there and let me know, you know, where you're coming to us from. And if you have anything in your glass, you know, what is it? I'm always I'm nosy like that. I like to know. All right, so let's move on to our next wine, which is, well, first and foremost, one of my favorite things for summer wines, screw cap. Nothing wrong with a screw cap, my friends. In fact, if it were up to me, all wines would be bottled under screw cap. And you know why? Because there's, there's no risk of the wine getting corked. The wine is clean and pristine and just like the winemaker intended. So anyway, I love this wine and this producer. It comes to us from South Africa and the Baden Horse. I mean, you gotta love the, the label, right? Nice and pink, perfect for summer. Um, it's the Secateurs from Baden Horse, their Secateurs line. It's their beautiful rosé. If you're not drinking rosé, you need to start. I'm just telling you. For this summer, that's your homework. Explore the beautiful world of rosé. But Baden Horst, uh, the winery is owned by cousins, Adi and Hein Baden Horst. Uh, according to their website, they're two very good looking cousins. And I've met Adi and yeah, He's pretty good looking, I gotta say, but they really make beautiful wines and for the money, this bottle is I believe $16. You can't beat it. They make a beautiful Chenin Blanc and a red blend as well, but I just really wanted to feature their rosé because it's perfect for an event like the 4th of July. It's just lovely. Um, let's see. They you oh, This wine is a blend of 60% Cinso, 40% Shiraz. Again, 12.5% alcohol. We're keeping it on the DL. Uh, the Cava before was 11.5% alcohol, so again, we're keeping it, keeping that alcohol a little tame, so you can drink more and for longer. But in any event, and let's give it a taste, uh, let's give it a sniff and a swirl and a smell, why don't we? Ugh, on the nose, you get beautiful raspberry and strawberry and roses. Ugh. And again, you get that beautiful minerality even on the nose, you can smell it. Uh, and the same thing on the palate. It's just it's happiness on your palate. It's strawberry and rose water and just beautiful notes. But at the same time, it's not heavy at all. And more importantly, it's not sweet. A lot of people see pink wine and they think sweet. Uh-uh. The dry style rosé, which is what I'm talking about when I say rosé, are fruity but not sweet. And they're very crisp and refreshing. Also, rosé pairs so well with so many summer foods. Anything from from hot dogs to roast chicken to pretty much anything you got, you can throw with this wine and it'll do really well with it. So again, it's the Badenhorst and I'll put the final list of notes, um, list of wines later on. I'll link out to it on the website as well. So, so that's our delightful rosé. Um, any questions about our rosé so far? Oh, hold on, let's see. Absolutely, thanks Laura. And any other comments or questions, feel free to chime in. I'm here all night. <laughs> well, it is my house, and I have to say that is nice. The concept of being able to hop online and interact with people about wine without having to leave your house, that, that's a pretty nice thing too, I gotta say, I like that. All right, so next we're going to jump to one of my favorite California wineries. So we've been to Spain, we've been to South Africa. Now we're bringing it home to California and one of my favorite producers, which is Round Pond. And the wine we're gonna be enjoying from them today is the Round Pond Rutherford Sauvignon Blanc 2015 Vintage. It's a beautiful bottle. There's a beautiful estate right there. We had the chance to visit them a few months ago and it's just, it's gorgeous. It's next time you're heading out to Napa, it's a must. So definitely put it on your list. But I've done some events using their wines. They're just, they're spectacular. Uh, the family has, it's funny, the family has actually been growing grapes for since the 1980s. And they've usually sold all, all their grapes off. They're farmers first. And they usually sell their grapes to, you know, such well-known wineries as Franciscan and Schramsberg and Duckhorn. But in 2007, they decided to start saving some of those grapes and making their own wines. They started with a line of wines called Kith and Kin, which means friends and family, because that's how they started 
uh, making wine. It was just they made a few barrels around the holidays for their friends and family. But then they were so good, people were asking for them year-round. So they're really coming out every year that seems they're coming out with more exciting. They also make a beautiful risotto de, de Nebbiolo. It's very hard to get, but it's delicious. But the Sauvignon Blanc, again, is just one of my favorites. And let's go ahead. Let's see. So it's 100% Sauvignon Blanc, as you might guess. Oops. And it's fermented entirely in stainless steel. And why is that term so important for summer? Whenever you see a wine that, or you hear about a wine being fermented in stainless steel, that just means that it's going to be very crisp, fruity, and refreshing. So you've got stainless steel on one end and then you've got oak, oakiness on the other end. So oakiness gives wine, you know, kind of a heavier, heavier body, a richer body, heavier flavors, and stainless steel is light, bright, and fruity. So you wanna look for those stainless steel wines for, um, for summer, they're a great choice. And what I love about this Sauvignon Blanc is it's just, it's so complex and it has so much personality. It's just, uh, you wanna savor every drop of it. On the, on the nose, you get beautiful aromas of guava and citrus. And again, you get that min a little minerality too, which I like so much in case you haven't gotten that so far. Oh, hold on, let's see, we might have another question or comment. Nope, not yet. But chime in whenever you're ready. Ugh. And on the palate, again, it just cleanses and refreshes your palate. It just makes your, makes your whole mouth happy. When you have wines with that great acidity, it just it makes your taste buds wake up and they're ready for either another sip of wine or again, this is extremely versatile with food. When I, when I taste that, I think shellfish, shrimp, oysters, something like that, that would really kind of match that bright acidity that's just so beautiful. I love it. And the way they make the wine so special, 10% uh, of the grapes are harvested when the acid levels are a little high. 80% are harvested when the sugar, acid, and pH are right by the numbers. And then I think the key is they let 10% hang on the vine for an extra, is it two weeks, until they get you know, nice and, and fruity and delicious. And then they blend it all together. And again, the wine just has so much personality. It's fantastic. These are, yeah, these are all great wines for day drinking, as some of us tend to do on 4th of July or on other days of the week. But in any event, so, ooh, I did forget to mention one important thing. Sorry, I'm hopping back to the secateurs for a minute because as I look over, I love it when people combine wine and humor. You gotta love it. So the Baden Horse Boys, if you look on the side of this Secateurs bottle, you might be like, what is that little critter right there, right? Well, that is a jackal. And as Adi said, it's, it's the halfway point of the bottle. So once you drink your half of the bottle, then you can hand it over to your mate and he can finish it. So anyway, I thought that was a little funny. And if you get the wines in the store, you can pass along to your friends too. So anyway, gotta love wine and humor. It's a good thing, it's a good thing. So that's our nice little Sauvignon Blanc. Hi, Tom and Karen. Good to see you guys. Oh, and Michelle, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We're having some fun trying some wines. We're, so far, we've done a delicious cava, and then we did a beautiful rosé from South Africa from the Baden Horsts. And now we're working on a uh, Round Pond Sauvignon Blanc from Napa. And oh, and another way you can keep your wine cold, for those of you, you know, you find yourself walking around your 4th of July party and you know, you've got the fingerprints on the glass, the wine is, is warm, you don't wanna drink it anymore. A great tip to keep it cool are these, my friends, these little jewels, frozen grapes. Pop them in the freezer the morning of or the night before and I'm telling you, they will keep your glass of wine so nice and chilled. And then afterwards, you have a little snack waiting for you in your glass. And I don't know if any of you have heard of these new um, cotton candy grapes, <laughs> but they really do taste like cotton candy. I'm not kidding. They don't make the wine taste like that at all, but when you eat them, has anyone heard of them? Oh my God. Oh, great. Laura, lovely Cremant sauce, the girl after my own heart. Love to see that. But in any event, yes, the frozen grape thing. And I think they have the cotton candy grapes at Fresh Market and Whole Foods, and they're organic. So check them out. I don't know how they did it, 
but I like it. They're very good, very tasty. And a perfect snack for summer, since I'm trying not to eat so much ice cream. The frozen grape thing, these are very satisfying. So, in any event. So, I told you all of our wines would be chilled today. Hold on, let's see. Oh, from Tom, let's see. Do I prefer California or New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs? Personally, I personally would say I probably prefer California Sauvignon Blancs because I like them with more of a peachy overtones. I would say New Zealand, New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs, there's nothing wrong with them and they're beautiful wines. Their wines tend to be more grassy and grapefruity uh, than the California one. But again, it's, it's personal preference. There's no wrong answers. And that's another thing, here on my, my page, Right, there's no stupid questions. There's well, there might no, no stupid questions and no wrong answers about things. Wine is about what you like. I'm not sitting here telling you what you should like. I want you to to encourage you to learn to trust your palate. But I'm not. I'm by no means a dictator. I just like to introduce you to new things, and then, you know, and then you can take it from there. But that's just my own personal opinion. But anyway, let's see. We got anything else here? Oh, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, the grapes, and even if you don't use them in your wine, the frozen grapes, they're a great snack. They're great, and those go down very fast, I promise. All right, so I said that all of our wines today would be served chilled, so you might have been thinking, well, she must not be featuring a red then, is she? And I am, my friends. And this wine, again, one of my favorites, discovered it a few months ago. Well, this particular wine, because it's a new release, but this type of wine, it's a, what, I'll tell you about it first. It's a, what we call a Cru Beaujolais. And this wine is the Druin Hospice de Belleville Fleury from Beaujolais, France. It's a 2014, 2014 vintage, which is the first vintage of this wine. It's actually a partnership between the Hospice de Belleville and the Druin family. Um, for those of you who are uh, fans of Burgundy, and Beaujolais is part of the Burgundy wine region, you might have heard of Maison Joseph Druin. Uh, so this wine is a partnership between that family and the very well-known um, charitable organization known as the Hospice de Belleville. They own 34 acres of, of Cru vineyards in Beaujolais from the Morgon, Fleury, and Bruy Cru's. Um, but I want to differentiate, and this is very important, very important. Does anyone drink Beaujolais? If you have, just let me know. And I ask for a reason because from now on, Beaujolais Nouveau, I want you to kind of put over there. Leave that on the shelf for someone else to buy. Because next time you go shopping for Beaujolais, you're going to ask for a Cru Beaujolais. And what the heck is that, right? Well, whenever you see um, Cru Beaujolais or see that on the label or you see one of the names, like for instance, you can see on this beautiful label the name Fleury. That's one of the 10 Cru. And it's just a specific vineyard plot. That's in, or vineyards and the best sites that are known for producing the best wine. These are the best that Beaujolais has to offer. But unlike Burgundy, where the best that region has to offer might cost you, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, Beaujolais is one of those kind of undiscovered regions that American consumers don't know that much about. So you can get amazing quality for not that much money. This wine, for instance, $26 which is, it, it's a tremendous value, if you will. So, very good. Oh, cool, let's see, Karen. Oh, you've had Beaujolais, fabulous. Love, love, love. Great. So, in any event, let me see. So, this other, unlike the rest of Burgundy, whenever you see a red Burgundy, it's 100% Pinot Noir, but in Beaujolais, the grape they use there is a little grape called Gamay. Um, and it's similar in some ways to Burgundy, but the, it usually creates very light-bodied, um, but still wines with a good personality. It's just different. If you're a fan of Pinot Noir, I think you'll really like Beaujolais, but let's go ahead and give it a taste. Anyone else want to share what they have in their glass right now? Go ahead. We got some Cremante Alsace going, but if anyone else wants to chime in, Go right ahead. So again, and you can see the color. You can see that beautiful color. 
Again, I'll have that down by next time. It's very translucent, so you can tell by looking at it that it's a little, little lighter in body. And pop this in the fridge about a half an hour to an hour before you're ready to drink it. And it just, it brightens up the beautiful flavors. It, it just creates magic. And it's, this wine is perfectly suited to serve chilled. So ugh, on the nose, you get beautiful red berries, but again, you, you get more depth than you might expect from a Beaujolais. There's a peppery note, there's some earthiness, but oh, a little violet, a little floral component. Definitely makes me wanna take another sip, that's for sure. Mm. And again, that chill, it just wakes up your palate. And yeah, it has those beautiful notes of dark cherries, I would say, and that beautiful peppery kick and um, earthiness. And it's got layers and layers of flavor, like as I'm, blackberry, you know, it just kind of keeps going. And again, this, like most of our wines, is just so versatile with food. This could pair with anything from roast chicken to burgers to grilled lamb chops or you could just sip it on your own by the pool uh, on the 4th, so totally up to you. Oh, that, welcome Jennifer, good to see you. Good to see you, let's see. Uh, let, da, 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 da. This wine is 26, I don't think I mentioned the Round Pond Sauvignon Blanc retails for $22. And here's another tip, because I will be doing these wine tastings weekly and I hope you can join me. Moving forward, they're gonna be on Thursdays at three o'clock. And if you see a wine you know, that I'm showing that and you're not able to find it locally, what you should do is just find a local wine store and ask someone at the, at the, ask the salesperson, a knowledgeable salesperson, describe the wine to her. So for instance, if you were looking for this particular, the Beaujolais, you would just say, I'm looking for a Cru Beaujolais that preferably from Fleury that has beautiful notes of red berries, earth and spice. You know, what can you get me that similar? And that's a fun way to explore as well because next time you can go in, you can ask them if they know something that's similar to that wine from a different region and it kind of really is a, a kind of a jumping off point to discovering even more even more wines that you like. And that's all, I know the, the world of wine can be overwhelming, but all you really need to worry about is what you like. So, you know, embrace it with a sense of adventure. It can be a heck of a lot of fun, I promise you. I know from experience. <laughs> uh, let's see, any, hey Jen. Jen, do you have anything in your glass you'd like to share with us? Or you might be at work, but I think if you, poured your boss a glass of wine, I think they would let, it's a holiday weekend, come on. I think the boss might let you go ahead and get away with it, I think. So in any event, so let's see. So, okay, that's kind of the end of our tasting for now. Like I said, I'm gonna be back with you next week, Thursday at three o'clock right here. Uh, I will post a link to these wines um, within an hour after we end the, bro the broadcast. Um, but if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer any more questions now. We have, we definitely have some time and I know some of you just got here, but if you have any questions, let me know. I think there's somewhere on your screen where it says you can subscribe uh, to be alerted if we go live again. So if you would do that, I would greatly appreciate it. Just click that button. And again, I also have the website, theglamorousgourmet.com, which you can visit at any time. You're always welcome there. And let's see. Yeah, and I think that's it. And you know, I always have to ask what's in your glass. And I know it's a little early, but even tonight, if you pour something great and you love it, come back and leave it in the comment section. I always like to know. I'm, I, I'm like I said, I'm very nosy like that. But I guess unless we have any more questions, let me see. That might wrap us up and we're kind of on time. So, okay. We got that down, which is nice. Let's see, here's Monica. I want to thank all of you who joined me today, though. I have to tell you, I was quite nervous, and the fact that you could join me just means the world to me. And like I said, if you had fun today, please spread the word. We hope to get more people next week. And again, you'll be able to watch the video. I'm gonna post it right when we're done and you can watch it at any time, forward it to your friends. But again, from the bottom of my heart, I so appreciate you joining us today. Oh wait, there's a question. 
I love questions. Uh, what would you suggest as a lower priced wine similar to a Le Monarche and lower than a Chassagne and Poligny? <laughs> That's nice. You know what I'm loving? What would be great for summer? Chablis. I, we've been drinking a lot of Chablis lately, and I think for summer, it's from Burgundy. If you're talking about, uh, you know, for any of those wines, you're going to be, that's going to hurt your pocket a little bit. Why not go for Chablis? Those wines are so beautiful, so perfect for summer. They're, it's 100% Chardonnay, but crisp and refreshing and, gosh, perfect with oysters and shellfish and all that jazz, yeah. But if you wanna ever invite me over some Montrage or Chassagne, I'm available. So I'm just putting that out there. But in any event, great question. Thank you for the questions, Tom. I really appreciate it. And if anyone else has a question, if not, that's fine. Like I said, we're on time. We made it to 30 minutes. And I guess with that, I will kind of wrap it up, but cheers to you. Thanks again for joining us. Um, and again, if you discover anything fun over the weekend, uh, feel free to chime in and leave me a note on the page here at the Glamorous Gourmet and the Wine Atelier. Thank you so much, and I look forward to speaking with you all next week. Cheers.